Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, I'm going to help you avoid the most common mistakes in AutoCAD. These are gonna help you create perfect drawings every time, save you time, and make your drawings look more professional in just a few minutes. Let's jump right into today's video. Practically every new AutoCAD user is going to be making at least some of these mistakes when they get started. They all stand out to those of us who have been using the software for a long time and today I want to share them with you and share how to avoid them in the process. So jumping right in and that's going to be creating your title blocks or using any kind of sheet layout in your model space. You can see here I'm in the model tab and you can see I've got a title block inserted into my model space. Title blocks and drawings, everything to do with sheets should be drawn in your layout tabs. You can see here I've switched to the floor plan tab. I've gotten the drawing and you can see I've got a layout or title block here inserted. This is going to ensure that you have the correct scale. It's also going to allow you to create multiple plans in a single drawing all to scale without having to copy any of the objects in your model space. Now this brings us back to our model space and another common mistake that I see new users doing and that is not drawing everything in your model space and at one to one scale. Now that means that you need to be drawing everything at its actual size and to scale within model space. This doesn't matter if you're just doing details of nuts and bolts and brackets or if you're doing entire floor plans or civil site plans. Everything should be drawn to scale and in the case of civil drawings should be drawn in the correct location coordinate wise whether that's UTM or a lat long but having things the actual size that they are in AutoCAD is going to help prevent huge mistakes in the future. Most designers and drafters are going to assume things are drawn correctly in AutoCAD when they get a drawing so right away sending a drawing that's not to scale or drawn incorrectly to the wrong size to say a client or another designer within your company mistakes can and likely will happen so the quick fix to that one is to always try to draw things to scale. Now I understand that some things may or may not be possible to draw to scale, whether you just don't know or it doesn't make sense to do it, whether it's a blow up for a detail or something like that. There are typically ways around it, like still drawing it to scale and using your viewports in your layout to expand the scale and show them as a close up. But if you are going to draw things not to scale, I highly recommend and putting a circle or a box around it in the model space here and putting that on the def point layer along with a piece of text that mentions that it's not to scale and say what scale you may have used or why everything on that def point layer is not going to plop but it is a great place to hide and put notes to yourself as well as notes to future designers or users of your files that goes on to another tip here and that is organizing your files and drawings in a way that another user or a client can understand them that means primarily putting things on the proper layers. Now you can see here, I am using a pretty standard uh, set of layers for civil design. This is the AIA layer set, but you can use one that is common within your company or in the industry you work with, but putting your objects on layers that make sense, things like text or annotation on anno or text layers, uh, floor plan walls on something like a wall or floor plan layer, and appliances and blocks on separate layers. Same for XRefs and title blocks. Everything should be on its own layer and organized in similar categories. This helps new users quickly and easily find what objects are what, as well as it gives you the ability to freeze and thaw or IE turn on and off these layers depending on the viewport. So in this viewport here, we're just showing, say, the floor plan 
whereas these ones here are showing the electrical layout that may be turned off in another viewport. This allows you to show specific layers in various viewports, turning them on and off dependent on the viewport. Next up in some of the common mistakes that I'll see new users do is adding text and large sets of notes or legends into your model space. Now this is fine in some specific cases and it's worth talking to say your manager or a CAD standards department in your company to see what their policy is on text. But 90% of the time you're going to want to put text notes, legends, labeling, all of that kind of stuff within your layout here. So you can see over here I've got in my uh, default standard template that I've created. I've got a section here of text where I can add in a legend, notes, copyright, disclaimer, etc. And then up here you've got additional space for more notes or details as well as maybe a more fully fleshed out legend. Now this allows you to have different notes for each sheet and independent of each other. If they're all within the model space, they're all going to be showing the same one or you're gonna be making copies within it, but that doesn't help you in most cases and it clutters up your model space. Keeping notes, labels, and dimensions uh, to each layout will help keep your drawings clean and it'll allow you to quickly and easily update things in the future especially for those users who are new to the drawings they can simply click on the layout go to the text that needs to be edited and change it rather than dig around in the model space to find it now the one exception there is annotative text and dimensions those you're going to want to put in model space because annotative text is going to update its size based on the scale that you've got your viewport set to. Every time you change this scale here, by using these toggles down here, you're going to be able to set or adjust the size of your text dependent on your viewport, and that's all going to be automatic for you once you've got that set up. Before we jump into our final mistakes and tips, if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. It's packed full of a ton of tips, tricks, and workflows that are gonna help speed you up in your drafting career. Everything from creating templates, adding layers, setting up drawings, XRefs, site plans, creating a PDF, plotting, and packaging up drawings from start to finish. You're gonna learn a ton in that course and it's jam-packed full of tips. You can get it up above and down below for a discount by using those links for CAD Intentions viewers such as yourself. Now let's jump into the last few tips and mistakes that you're going to want to avoid. All right, so another common mistake that you'll see from newer and rookie designers is that they will explode things within a drawing. Now the explode command is just that. It's going to break apart an object within AutoCAD and 95% of the time, you're not going to want to do that even though it may be the quicker and easier way to accomplish something you're not entirely familiar with. But almost always there will be a way to edit something without exploding it. Now there are a few few options and times when exploding does make sense and that may be when you're simply trying to pull a few pieces from that object and you don't need the rest of it but in many cases exploding something like say this text block or attribute block here if I type in explode it's going to break everything as well as wreck the connectivity of that object most of the time you're going to be able to say double click it to edit these options or you can right click on it once selected and go into the block editor. But exploding blocks is typically a no-no and it's an instant rookie mistake that other users will notice and point out. As much as you can, try to avoid exploding any objects and before you do, check in with someone else on the team. Now that kind of leads me to one of the last points here, and that is ask another user before you spend too much time fighting with the software. There are tons of little hidden tips and tricks, many of which you can find on my AutoCAD channel here. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video to make sure you see all my new ones and browse the catalog. But if there's something you don't know in AutoCAD, definitely ask somebody, ask me, join my forum, uh, ask a colleague or a coworker, 
You can easily spend a ton of time scouring forums and trial and error and pulling your hair out battling with AutoCAD to get something done, but the quickest and easiest way to do it is to ask someone else. I highly uh, recommend this to all of my junior drafters. I'm always open and available for phone calls and messages at my job to answer questions from new users. It saves everybody a ton of time, and it's a great way to learn other users' workflows and best practices when you're trying to complete a task. And lastly, before I let you guys go, one final mistake and kind of tip for all of you is to save often and make sure you have your auto save settings set up within AutoCAD. You can do that by typing in options and hitting enter. Simply go over to the open and save tab here and go down to file safety precautions. Just make sure you've got the automatic save checked on and you can adjust the default time to something more like 15 or 20 minutes if you'd like because it can be a little annoying when the program kind of pauses for uh, a save every 10 minutes but make sure you have this selected make sure you have your settings similar to this and your files extension for temporary files this is going to also give you the option to recover drawings using the drawing recovery manager which i'll make a video about soon so i really hope you'll be able to save some time and headache by avoiding these typical autocad mistakes don't forget to let me know in the comments down below what you think and share some of your common mistakes you run into within autocad i'd love to hear them have a good one and cheers bye